안녕하세요. 서울대학교 보름의 병원 이호입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. e h o of Seoul National University p o r a m e Medical Center. Today, I'm going to talk about one guide kit for maxillary anterior region. In the case of anterior maxilla, compared with other areas, we need to pay more attention because it is aesthetically very important. First, we need to make a prosthesis that is harmonious to surrounding gingival line, as shown. The tissue change looks quite abrupt. Then, it will end up in an aesthetic result, and also aesthetically, it'll be more favorable if there is more interdental papilla fill. Also, it should imitate the convex contour of the labial surface of the natural tooth. For this, we need to pay attention to certain bone structures for aesthetic results around the implant. The height of alveolar crest of adjacent teeth, and height and thickness of facial bone wall in the area where implant is going to be placed. We need to make three-dimensional considerations in order to secure two types of bone structures that have been mentioned, along with other areas and mesiodistal, labial, palatal, apical, coronal dimensions need to be considered at the same time. Mesiodistally, we can think of a danger zone. The implant should not be in the 1 to 1.5 millimeters within adjacent teeth. Labiopalatally, there needs to be at least 2 millimeters of labial bone plate towards the implant's facial shoulder. In other words, the facial shoulder should not be here. You should not place the implant too palatally as well because you might end up with a ridge wrap design. Yes, it may be better than positioning the implant labially and causing bone loss. However, it would be ideal to place the implant in the comfort zone. Apical coronally, the implant should be placed 2 mm apical to the adjacent CEJ and Compared with the labial marginal gingiva post implant placement, it needs to be 4 mm apically positioned. If you position the implant too apically, then the pocket can be deepened and interdental papilla may not fill. If it is positioned too coronally, the shoulder may be shown or the crown may become too shortened. On top of that, when performing immediate implant placement, Because of the slope and the extraction socket, there can be unwanted labial or palatal inclination of the implant. If there is labial inclination, then you will not be able to provide SCRP or combination type prosthesis. The labial plate could also become too thin, leading to unesthetic results. If there is Too much palatal inclination, aesthetic problems will not result. However, on the palatal side, crown thickness can increase, and this will also lead to an ideal prosthesis. This was a 41-year-old female patient who was healthy. As shown in number 11, there is a retained root. Extraction was done. Immediate implant placement was planned. A traumatic extraction was done. without damaging the surrounding tissue. As mentioned earlier, three-dimensional considerations were made and caution was paid in order to prevent unwanted side effects because of the slope in the extraction socket. Slightly palatally, initial drilling was performed. Following that, the whole size was expanded. Implant was placed. Appropriate depth was adjusted apico-coronally. Bone graft was done. Provisional was fabricated and provided. And the final prosthesis was completed. This is three-year post-op. Aesthetically, it seems okay. This result was achieved while continuously thinking about the precautions that, that were mentioned previously. During surgery, however, if you take a closer look, 
the crown height is slightly high and uh, there is a slight insufficiency of interdental papilla. Significant effort was paid, however, it may be difficult to achieve satisfactory results in the upper maxillary region. This is a before extraction, after immediate implant placement and provisional delivery. And this is after final prosthesis delivery. In difficult regions, such as upper maxillary regions, if you use one guide kit, you can get a lot of help. But basically, by using one guide kit, you can do prosthesis driven treatment. You'd be able to also perform accurate and precise simulation and achieve ideal results using the guide. When performing immediate implant placement freehand, there can be drill deviations. By using special drills included in one guide kit, you can place the implant in the ideal position following the right path. When you use tapered drill, just as is, there can be deviations of the drill and the path can be altered. However, if you use path drill included in one guide kit rather than tapered drill, you can prevent such side effects and slope the surface. If you use a tapered drill, there can be slipping. However, by using path drill, you can prevent this from happening ahead. You can make a flat surface and then you can use initial drill and guide drill to form appropriate path and ensure implant placement in an ideal way. There is something that you need to bear in mind even when you use path drill and that is double contact. There's two types of path drill, 7mm and 13mm options. If you use a long path drill from the beginning, then there will be no double contact. There will be lack of contact on the guide barrel side, and you'd only be able to gain contact from the bone. So drilling in the accurate position will not be possible in this case when using one guide kit. This is a very important uh, precaution that we should bear in mind in order to get double contact you need to use a shorter drill so that you can get double contact from guide barrel and the bone by drilling in this way you can maximize the effect of path drill this is a patient case this is 78 year old male patient the patient had hyperlipidemia but it was under control number 12 13 and 14 are missing and implants were planned here Number 13 Ponic was planned and implant positions were planned in number 12 and 14. For number 12, a 4.0 by 10 millimeter and for number 14, 4.5 by 10 millimeter implants were chosen. Guide was fabricated. Because there was lack of keratinized mucosa, flap surgery instead of a flapless surgery was performed. When you do flapless surgery in the anterior area, the tissue thickness it can be excessively thin. It may be difficult to recreate the convex form of the natural tooth facial root. In general, especially in healed ridge, open flap surgery is recommended more than flapless surgery. Guide is adapted following the right order. Flattening drill is used. Initial drilling is done. All considerations are done ahead of surgery considering the characteristic of a one guide kit. The surgery is done in a very simple manner. Guide is removed. Because this is open flap surgery, you can see that checking is done, whether drilling is done appropriately. 2.2 twisted drill is used 
to do drilling. Drilling process itself is pretty much defined. Here and then, depth gauge is used to check whether drilling is done in the appropriate depths. One guided drills are used in defined sequence. This is final drill for number 12. And this is final drilling for number 14. For number 12, 4.0 by 10 millimeter implant is placed. As you can see, this is mount type. These days, there is tool for placing mount type. However, such tool was not available, so no mount type should have been used, but it was not available either. Conventional way was used for implant placement, and it was finished off with implanted driver included in one guide kit. Because appropriate drilling path was established, there was no problem. Implant driver is used to adjust implant placement depths. Guide is removed and implant placement is checked. At times, implant can stick out towards the apex side, so because this is open flap surgery, I've checked it. Healing abutment is connected and suture is done. Surgery is closed. This is panoramic image, immediate post-op, and this is comparison of before and after. If you look at the CT image, you can see that implant has been placed in appropriate position in number 12. Let's summarize. In the case of upper maxillary region, when using one guide kit, you can get more favorable results. In the case of upper anterior region, three-dimensional considerations need to be made, and one guide kit can really be of help in precise design and planning. More so than other regions, digital guides can be more handy, especially in the case of immediate implant placement, you can use the path drill included in one guide kit. This is what I've prepared thus far. If you're interested in more detail and hands-on practice that can be of practical help, please refer to Offline Master Course. I look forward to your keen interest. Thank you for watching.